Hey everybody, welcome to November. We are going to check out some earnings because earnings season is now in full swing. We've heard from some of my favorite companies. We're going to go through a few of them. Today we're going to look at SoFi. SoFi reported its latest earnings and they are pretty good. Uh, before we dive in, please take a minute and check out the link you see on your screen, fool.com slash Frankel. Get a message from my sponsor, The Motley Fool, the top 10 stocks to buy now, and it's the best way to support this work I'm doing on YouTube. Again, that link is fool.com slash Frankel. Check it out. So let's dive right in. I want to share my screen real quick. Okay, so let's start here. So this is the number of SoFi members. If you had told me two years ago that SoFi was going to hit almost 9.4 million members uh, in the third quarter of 2024, I wouldn't have believed you. So this is definitely better than a lot of people expected. If you look on the bottom here, the year-over-year -year growth rate is slowing a little bit, but that's to be expected when you get to some of these kind of numbers. A 35% growth rate when you're talking about a membership base well over 9 million is still pretty impressive. And if you look at the actual number of new members that were added during the quarter, 756,000 is the highest number of additions to date for SoFi. So that's pretty impressive. If we move on to the number of products, so each time someone signs up for a bank account or a credit card or gets a new loan, that's a product. So SoFi has about nine point, a little over 9.3 million members. They have 13.65 million products. Um, so the average member has a little under one and a half products. So they're doing a pretty good job of cross-selling. In honesty, this is one of the areas where I'd like to see them improve a little bit. Um, the year-over-year -year growth in the number of products is lower than the year-over-year -year growth in the number of members, 31% versus 35%, as we saw on the other slide. But even so, they added over a million new products for the quarter, so I can't be too mad about it. But I'd like to see them do a little better of a job cross-selling, and um, there's a few ways they could do that, and we'll get to that a little bit more on that in a little while. Um, and most of that growth was fueled by the financial services products. So this chart on the left shows SoFi's loan product growth. That was growing 19% year over year in the third quarter. These are primarily personal loans, but SoFi also has a student lending business. They also have a mortgage business. And that part of the business is really just ramping up the mortgage business. So this is mostly personal loans. Um, but financial services products, you can see that product, the growth was 33% year over year, meaning that more people are getting checking accounts through SoFi, getting savings accounts, getting credit cards. And that's where the bulk of the growth is coming from. And you can see there are almost 12 million financial services products and, you know, less than 1.9 million total loans um, in SoFi's member base. So that's really an interesting statistic as well. And it's important for this reason. So the more financial products SoFi has in its ecosystem, the more customers it has to naturally cross sell other products to, specifically loans. So you can see two years ago, that's this one right here, there was a, t there was a ratio of 4.6 to 1 in terms of financial services products to lending products. Now that ratio is up to 6.2. So the higher that gets, the more people that are in SoFi's ecosystem who don't yet have a loan. And it's kind of a natural way to set, to create a marketing loop. Now, SoFi's, one of my biggest complaints about SoFi is that its customer acquisition cost has been and remains pretty high. Um, as a SoFi member, they're offering me, I think, a $300 referral bonus um, if I can get a friend to get a loan through them. Um, their acquisition bonuses they're paying out are pretty high, and that's kind of what they've had to do to get this growth rate. Now, the higher that this ratio gets, the less that they have to rely on things like that. So that's why this is such a big deal. Um, if they can just get a current satisfied member to apply for a mortgage through them or do something like do something like that organically without having to, you know, pay a referral bonus or pay advertising or things like that, the more efficient the business can get. Um, another real interesting thing about this quarter, um, SoFi is revealing that their newer loans are actually performing better than their older loans. Um, if you look at at um, their personal loan originations. This, the gray line right here is the is loans originated in 2017. And over the life of the loans, that this percentage means that 
the total loss ratio was almost 8% of total loan principal. That's a lot. Now, SoFi personal loans tend to have interest rates in the 10% ballpark, maybe a little bit more. So there's still some room for a profit, especially when 2017 loans were originated. Savings accounts and things like that were paying like almost nothing. So, you know, a lot more room for margin than there is now. Um, But the recent loans defined as those originated from the fourth quarter of 2022 to the fourth quarter of 2023, so far are on track to perform significantly better. They're on track to tar- to get to roughly, you know, a little under 6% of total losses if we kind of duplicate this chart under here. So that's encouraging. Um, again, the average SoFi personal loan has an interest rate above 10% these days. So that's really encouraging. It leaves a lot of room for profitability. Um, and is just showing that they're doing a better job of underwriting, honestly. Um, so quarterly performance, looking at the, the top and bottom lines, revenue was up 30% year over year. That's an acceleration over last quarter. Um, adjusted EBITDA was the highest it's been ever. So that's pretty impressive as well. 27% growth year over year. SoFi is now a profitable bank. That um, kind of seemed you know, unrealistic a couple years ago. But if you look at the trailing 12-month numbers, adjusted net revenue keeps climbing pretty steadily. Uh, adjusted EBITDA is growing very, very fast. And SoFi was net profitable over the past 12 months. That's a pretty encouraging statistic. Um, company Company's guidance, it, it did pretty well against its guidance. Uh, revenue came in well above the high end of the range. Adjusted EBITDA came in above the high end of that range. Margin was above what they expected. Net income on the bottom line was significant, significantly above what, what was expected. So the company is, there's not a whole lot to dislike about SoFi's earnings. Um, there's a reason the stock is up significantly over the past few months. Um, and the company raised its full year guidance. That's what you're looking at right here. The prior guidance range to the current guidance range, which is right here. And in all those metrics, adjusted net revenue, adjusted EBITDA, um, bottom line net income, uh, earnings per share, uh, book value growth, they adjusted the guidance upward in every single one of those. So I think that's pr- a pretty impressive quarter. Just another thing kind of buried in the in the tables in the back, uh, something that's really worth noting. This figure right here is SoFi's total deposits in the banking side of their business, at $24.4 billion right now. And that's really impressive considering SoFi's banking division started essentially from zero at the beginning of 2022 when it first got its banking charter. And SoFi's total loans on its books are about $26.6 billion. So its loan portfolio is almost totally covered by its deposit base. That's really significant for a bank. You want, that to, you want the deposit number to be a little more than, than the loan number, ideally. Uh, but SoFi is definitely heading in the right direction with that. Um, deposits are just a lower cost way of funding loans than you know, all the stuff on the top, revolving credit facilities and things like that. It's a more efficient way to do do a uh, banking operation. So overall, I'm very happy with this quarter. I mentioned there's a few things that could be improved upon, like cross-selling and things like that. But so if I continues to outperform its own expectations quarter after quarter, the market doesn't really seem to care. I think the stock went down actually after this report. Um, there's a few things I'm looking forward to in 2025, which will get 2025 guidance with SoFi's next quarter. Um, and I'm going to talk about those in another video that will be posted to my channel in just a few days. So be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. You all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to sp- partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from the popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by nearly five times. So go to fool.com slash Frankel to get your 10 stock picks now. The Motley Fool Stock Advisor returns are 767% as of July 5th, 2024, and are measured against the S&P 500 returns of 163% as of July 5th, 2024.